of competent professional lunch, um, lunch, lunch, lunch ladies, we'll call them, but certainly we wouldn't want to, you know, maybe any, any men who may be serving in the positions. Um, because the truth is, you are handling the students in the most important time of the day, which is your unstructured time, and your job is very challenging because it is to engage them in the type of unstructured play that they need in order to come back to the classroom focused. Um, so please know how, what, how, how much you're valued and how significant your goal is and how much we support what, what we're putting forward tonight. And those conversations will continue on on both ends of this. I want to say that back to the ladies because they're talking about some of you tonight on some of own. But also, um, as lunch captain, I think what happens with those online time working, the parents, I was going to tell Mr. Shumlo and say, let me introduce the program properly. The parents don't understand there's a big issue, and they don't want to pay a fee. I already have parents calling me, why should I pay a fee if I can just write a check? And if, if I can just go on the record, um, I want you to know that on the back end, we are thoroughly looking into, into this. Um, as recently as today, I started some because it's important for me to get a better handle with the lunch captains as to what the challenges are. Tomorrow we have a principal meeting that is on the agenda, um, and, and I thank you for saying that, um, and, and it's certainly no excuse, but I do want to put out there that some things are in progress from the business office prior, and by the time they returned over to us, it was already too far gone to look into it or, or pull it back. So it was just one of those kind of let, let's go with the flow and see where it takes us, and it's taking us into some wavy borders, and, yeah, and we um, recognize that. I have 400 kids in our school, and only five parents are online. Yeah, and, and I, I do, I do understand. I, said, I think that is the best program. No check. The money is there. I think it's the best thing in the day. But I don't think the parents understand. Yeah. They got a letter, and they didn't understand. And they're asking for more questions. And, 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 I, and, and I, I, I do recognize that the communication was um, very, very quick and was not clear, and we didn't have the time to really make sure, check for understanding, which is what we do. Yeah. You know? okay. So thank you thank so you. much, and well. I look forward to meeting with you yeah, in the near future. Thank you for doing what you did. Yeah. Communications. <laughs> Any communications? No. Finance Committee, Mr. Groh. Yes, Mr. President. Any board member who takes exception to any of the following <coughs> listed actions under the category of Finance Facilities and District Planning Committee may so indicate now a separate motion for each of the accepted actions will be entertained. Hearing none, I move that one through seven be adopted. Second. Roll Ms. Alberti. Ms. Alkiri? Four. Ms. Bancroft? Andronopoulos? Four. Mr. Donovan? Four. Mr. Grillo? Four. Ms. Jarvis? Four. Ms. Malinick? Four. Mr. Musto? Mr. Bruno? Four. Education and curriculum, Sue? Any board member who takes exception to any of the following listed actions under the category of education and curriculum committee may so indicate now in a separate motion that each of the accepted actions will be entertained. Hearing none, I make a motion that one to eight be approved. Second. Roll call. Ms. Alkiri. Four. Mr. Andronopoulos? Four. Mr. Donovan? Four. Mr. Grillo? Four. Ms. Jarvis? Four. Ms. Malinick? Four. Ms. Uh, Mr. Bruno? Four. Policies, rules, and regulations. Mr. Donovan. Any board member who takes exception to any of the following is an action under the category of policy.
make the motion to accept items one, two, four, five, six, seven, and eight, leaving out number three for an individual vote. Second. Roll call. Ms. Alkiri. Four. Mr. Andronopoulos. Four. Mr. Donovan. Four. Mr. Grillo. Four. Ms. Jarvis. Four. Ms. Domlek. Four. Mr. Bruno. Four. Okay, number three. Number three. Be resolved that a pilot program expanding the current dress code policy be approved for the 2017 18 school year, effective October 1st, 2017. This expansion will include the following apparel as official school wear bottoms, as long as they meet the approved colors of black, gray, navy, khaki, slash, tan, and meet the requirements of length. Bermuda style shorts, fingertip skirts, and the appearance no grips, hairs, cuts, or holes. Get a jeans, skirts, shorts, jeggings, stretch pants, slash leggings, feedback for feedback. In addition, and only on Fridays, be resolved that all students in grades 8 and 12 may wear the winter spirit wear top of their choice with school appropriated bottoms. These spirit wear tops may include, but are not limited to, a nurse team jersey, shorts, a nurse club organization, activity shirts, or any other shirt that's representative of winners. Second. Roll call. Ms. Alkiri? Four. Mr. Andronopoulos? Uh, yes. Mr. Donovan? Four. Ms. Grillo? Four. Ms. Jarvis? Ms. Mamalek? Four. Mr. Bruno? Four.
Oh yeah, the 100, the 100th anniversary uh, is going to be celebrated on Saturday. Should I read this? Yes. Okay, the Township of Lindhurst cordially invites all participants and spectators to join in on their 100th anniversary grand parade celebration on Saturday, September 30th. These organizations who take part in our annual Memorial Day Parade have already been included in line of march for our centennial parade. Assembly in front of the town hall will begin promptly at 1030 with the signing of the with the singing of the national anthem by our most talented Leonard's High School choir, followed by Mayor Jim Russo's welcoming address with a free parade kickoff event not to miss. Those participating in the parade will congregate at the designated streets adjacent to Dollarbrook Avenue with parade step off at approximately 11.30, proceeding, proceeding the parade route as follows. Starting at the Linners Town Hall, east on Dollarbrook Avenue, north on Ridge Road, west on 2nd Avenue, south on Stuyvesant Avenue, east on Dollarbrook Avenue, and ending at Delafield Avenue with the celebration that facilities will continue and people will just This eventful parade will be a significant milestone in bringing this great community of families together in unity and festivity. And we look forward to everyone's enjoyment, including both participants and spectators. And that's about it. Um, it's, the, everything is supposed to be spectacular. A lot of planning went into it. Uh, I'm sure no one here is going to miss it. Uh, it it's going to be fantastic. And from what I understand, the weather is going to be good. So it's going to be a great time for everyone. And, hmm? Yeah, there's going to be all kinds of, all kinds of activities for the kids. Uh, as well as the grown-ups, and it's just going to be a great, a lot of food vendors, a lot of food. It's going to be a great day. Don't miss it. Please. No, nowhere else. There's no nowhere else over here. Um, that's about it. Do I have a motion to adjourn? Oh, wait a minute. celebration. My thanks to the township. Um, in August, we started working with them, um, particularly the chairperson, and figuring out ways we could bring that into our classrooms. And the students have really been having a great time um, looking at the styles of dress over a hundred years, what our town looked like, the, the logistics, the demographics, um, using some data and statistics in their mathematics classes, um, writing stories about their experiences growing up in Windhurst, what they love about their town, illustrating, drawing pictures in, in art to represent Windhurst as well. Um, we hope to have a lot of these on display at the Centennial Celebration, so come out and see that, but, but know that it's, it's, it's worked its way into our classrooms um, you know, to honor and, and, and respect 100 years of Lindhurst. Um, in addition, um, on October 1st, we're going to start really going out on and releasing to, to the community um, where we are with regard to the redevelopment of, of our schools based on the, the referendum that was passed um, you know, 10 months ago. Um, we're in a really, really great place. We have awesome project overviews. I wanted to give the board an opportunity to see them firsthand before I started sharing them, although the, the sharing has been very tempting. Um, you'll see what, what our plans are, how we progress in those plans, and um, really have a, a good idea of about where we are with just some fine polishing left. Um, we'll also be releasing a timeline because we want to make sure that the community understands what to expect when. So in essence, we're going to be finalizing all of our plans and getting ready to go out to bid by the end of December. 
Once we go out to bid, that process is very driven by statute and code, and of course we will comply with all of that. So we expect by late February, early March, to have, um, ha have made a decision on who will in fact lead us in, in this exciting journey. Um, and then from there, we're looking to actually have everything in progress probably by very early spring. So we're looking at early April where we'll actually see things in motion. Um, you'll also see that we'll be starting at our two biggest additions, which will be Roosevelt School and Columbus School. Now that's very strategic because in the event we needed to move students, we have to make sure that, that we can move them, be it for an hour or, or a week. Um, and once we know that the penetration through those schools has been completed and we're in a good place, then we'll begin the work at Franklin and Washington. So it will be staggered, staggered projects, but that's very strategic and for the safety of students. Um, in addition, when the bids go out, we're going to see that they're going to be very, very um, dis decisive so that we're identifying exactly what we need because the student safety is first and foremost. So the people that we'll be seeking are people who already have the clearance to work in school environments, who have the experience of working in school environments, and also companies that are willing to make sure that they're working in alignment with us because routine curriculum and instruction come first. And, and that's, that's going to be something we're going to stay very strong on. Um, so I'm very excited about that. I also have to really just take a moment to um, formally welcome our new school business administrator, Mr. Scott Bison. <laughs> I've had the opportunity to know Scott now for, for a couple of months, and, and working with him is, is just fantastic. Um, he has an, a, a wide array of experiences in law enforcement, in military, particularly with regards to facilities and management. So he's a really excellent addition, not only to our district, but to this project and brings a lot of expertise. Um, he's really jumped right in um, and, and, and gotten on board with us and, and off we go. Um, so, rest assured that there's a lot of work that goes into all of what you're going to be seeing in the spring and we're excited to be sharing the um, images and the illustrations with you and again, that, will be, that release will begin on or about October 1st. Thank you so much. Thank you. 